I see all these coding bootcamp advertisements and then people online talking about how they got a software job with no coding experience and they're able to do it in four months and when I see these kinds of things online it kind of makes me cringe a little bit because I feel like it gives people misconceptions about coding jobs. If you look up coding bootcamp in Google you'll see all these advertisements of bootcamps and they'll say stuff like learn how to code in 12 weeks or become a dev in 16 plus weeks. And then it says join thousands of grads who landed their dream jobs. And then if you type in YouTube how to land a coding job, and then you put in, for some reason it's always says in three months or like in four months. And say, say let's look at the four months one. Then you see all these videos of people talking about how they landed a job in four months. And why is it four months? What is the significance of four months? Why does everyone keep talking about four months? I'm sure that these people mean well, but I think it can lead to some misconceptions about coding jobs. And when I talk to some beginners about coding, it, I can start to see some of these misconceptions coming from them. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts after 10 plus years of coding experience. And I'm gonna share three misconceptions that I think I sensed in some beginner programmers before and hopefully by debunking these misconceptions it'll give you a more clearer understanding of what you're getting into if you're just starting to learn how to code. So my name is Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey. So let's get started. Alright, so misconception number one that I'm trying to help you avoid is this idea that you can learn how to code in just four months. So in these advertisements, it says you can learn how to code in 12 weeks, 16 weeks. So that's like three or four months. And the truth is, is that you're not going to learn how to code like you're, you're not you're going to be able to code something in three in three months or four months, but you're not going to really know really how to code by then. I always compare learning a programming language to learning a verbal language. For a verbal language, like I took Spanish 1A when I was in middle school and I learned some Spanish for that that one semester, that, that three month semester. And I could say some basic things in Spanish, but I wasn't fluent at all. And I, I didn't really know that I, I was only touch scratching the surface when it came to learning Spanish. And I think the same will be true for coding boot camps. Like you can say some things, you can say some practical things, you can travel to a country and do a vacation in a country and speak that language and just be able to get around having taken that class, having taken those three to four months of learning. But you're not going to be able to have like real meaningful conversations if you only have that kind of background, you really need to have, you're going to have to spend a lot more time learning the language to become fluent. And then you can start to have some more meaningful conversations. And something interesting too, is that I took Spanish for about four years. I took Spanish 1A, 1B, and then two and three. And I took those, those years of Spanish. And then when I went out into the streets, there were some people who were speaking Spanish. I was trying to communicate with them and they were confused. They had no idea what I was saying and I had no idea what they were saying. I kind of had like some idea what they were saying, but I couldn't really have a good conversation with them. And so the point here is that you really need to have a lot of practice in order to become fluent. And part of that practice, what, what comes from that practice is learning the culture of the language, learning the slang and learning how to say things in a way that's natural. Sometimes I speak to my wife in Tagalog, which is our Filipino language, and she says that the way that I, I phrase things, even though it's grammatically correct, it sounds weird, it sounds awkward. And I think the same is true for coding. If you can, you can know how to code something, but then the way that you go about it sometimes, it's kind of awkward. And I've definitely seen a lot of programmers code. I will look at their code and I'll say, okay, well, I understand what they're doing. I understand what they're trying to do. And their code is actually, it actually compiles, it actually runs, but the way they're going about doing it is kind of awkward. And I think a byproduct of this idea that you can learn how to code in just three to four months is that people start looking at coding as like a hobby. Like they only look at it and they only come to it when they have spare time. And I think that's, that's not a really effective way to learn how to code. If you really want to land a job, become a real developer, you can't just learn how to code here and there and just only code on weekends. And this is something that I've seen happen a lot with beginners. They just code on the weekend. They don't have like a system in place where they have some guided practice. And I think that's, that's a something that's, that's a byproduct of this misconception. Coding can be a hobby, especially when you're starting off, 
but coding is also a career and so you it's really you're really gonna have to put a lot of time and investment trying to learn how to code and learning getting some basic foundations when it comes to learning how to code going back to my analogy earlier with the verbal languages say you're going to become a translator in another country i think that's more accurate that's a more accurate illustration of what a developer is like a developer is just somebody who translate human language into computer language we're trading we're translating things in our minds ideas that we have in our heads and we want to put them into code so that a computer can execute these these ideas that we have in our heads and so i think that's what we're really doing as developers we're just translating these the human human language into computer language so if coding languages are like verbal languages then developers are like translators because translators get paid to translate and so likewise developers they get paid to translate so if you're really going to become a translator it's not enough that you just learn the language for three to four months right you're going to have to spend a lot of time learning that language become fluent in that language and so you have to do a lot of time studying the language and then you also have to do a lot of time practicing the language and practicing it with with other people who are who speak that language fluently. The last thing I'll say about this misconception is that a successful software development career is one where you're constantly learning, constantly growing. And I've been coding for 10 plus years and I'm still being stretched beyond my limits. I'm still being pushed beyond what I think what I thought I could do in my job. And I'm always learning and that's because technology is always changing. Technology is growing. We're getting new hardware, we're getting new software. So you'll be forced to learn a lot of new things. The learning does doesn't really stop and that's the kind of the same with languages too you you can learn the language you can speak the language become fluent but then you're still growing you're learning more vocab and that's why in school right we don't just we don't have English only in first grade we have English all the way up to 12th grade and even into college we, we start we still have that English class even though we're already fluent in English so it's one thing to get the job, but if you want to keep the job, you need to keep growing and learning. And that's where having a good programming foundation comes into play. If you have a good programming foundation, then it's easy to learn new things. If you if you only go to a boot camp and they only teach you like one skill or one one framework and then you get really good at that one skill or one framework, you don't have a good foundation when it comes to programming, then it's going to be really hard for you to pick up new things. And for me, in my in my experience, I learned C first. That was my first programming language. That gave me a good programming background. And so when I went to my first job, they asked me to code in C++. And then they asked me to code in Python. They asked me to code in Java, cut in JavaScript. And then I just was able to keep learning these different languages because I had a good programming foundation. And then when I went to my second when I went to my second job, then they they asked me to code in C sharp. And so I was able to pick up all of these things because I have that good background. And that's why I recommend for all developers, no matter what field that you go into in terms of software fields, uh, I still recommend that you learn C be just so that you can get that good programming foundation. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects. And I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. Now, the second misconception is that coding jobs have awesome work-life balance. And I'm kind of smiling here because I'm thinking about my coworkers and this is a joke that we have all the time because sometimes we work really late and there are seasons when we work late for multiple days. And so we always joke about how we don't have work-life balance. But if you think about it, we actually do have a good work-life balance if, if, I really, if I'm really being honest. So for example, we do have flexibility when it comes to our work hours. Like some people come in to work at nine, some people come to work at eight, seven, 10. I have some coworkers who come in at 10 or 11 sometimes. And then a lot of times coworkers, they, they leave, they disappear like in the middle of the day because they're going to like 
a doctor's appointment or something like that or they have to do something at home to pick up their their daughter or their son and so we do have that we had we do have that flexibility so i'll give it that we do have that kind of flexibility but with that flexibility there's also times where your flexibility causes you to stay late so there's been many times where we we also have to work late sometimes we come in on days that we're off too and so this is why i kind of say i kind of cringe when people are so excited about coding job insert they're saying oh i want it because of the work-life balance i understand though if you're like for example if you're a nurse and then you do 12 hour shifts and you do it like five days a week then i can understand why you want to pivot into software development so i can understand that and of course like having a software job you'll definitely have a better like work-life balance because at least you know you're only working monday to friday i know a lot of nurses who they don't really have control over their schedule then they have to work on sundays and saturdays and holidays and so i i can see that the engineer or the software engineering job or the software developer job is more uh, has a better work-life balance so don't get me wrong it we do have a good work-life balance in that sense another thing that's talked about when it comes to a work-life balance is this idea of remote work because people talk and get excited about being able to work remotely work whenever they want however they want wherever they want and I think it's it's interesting because even though I have a software job, I still go to work every day. And it's because maybe it's just because of my field, because I'm I do a lot of embedded software development. So I work a lot with hardware. So that's the reason why I go into the office. But there are even times when even though I don't have to go into the office or I don't have to go to the lab, I still go to the office anyways, because I have coworkers who are there and it's just easier to collaborate with them and have conversations with them if you can just go walk to their office and then talk and then you can come up with some design ideas for our code it's just a lot easier that way and so i think it really depends on the work culture that you're that's at your work and i find it interesting that even during the pandemic i was working remotely too and everyone was working remotely and then when the pandemic was over and when it died down I, st I started going back to work and I was going in more frequently, but the, my friends who were not software developers, they were still working remotely and they're still working remotely to this day. And so it's not necessarily true that if you get a software job, then you can automatically get a remote job. All right, so the last misconception is that your life will be complete once you land the dream job like that one advertisement was saying. You will definitely have that moment of satisfaction once you land that, once you finally land that software job. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't celebrate. You should definitely celebrate it because you worked a lot, you worked hard and you put in a lot of time and effort to be able to land that job. And the interview process is difficult and you're able to land that software job, you should celebrate it. But I would say that after that um, initial moment of satisfaction, you'll eventually start to have some complaints about your job. So once you start working, they'll give you a code base and then the code base will be hundreds and hundreds of lines of code and you don't know what's going on. And then the variables, you're so confused on what these variables are for. You don't know how to test the code. And sometimes you, you, do, you test the code and you're testing it incorrectly. And so there's a lot of new challenges that are gonna come up. And then not only that, there's gonna be some deadlines and there have some expectations. And sometimes it can be kind of stressful to try to live up to the expectations. And sometimes you're, you're worried, you're worried about losing the job. And so these are some challenges that might come in. And like I alluded to earlier, even though you already know how to code, they're gonna be putting you, they're gonna be giving you some tasks that you have no clue what, what to do, you don't know how to do it. And it's part of the stretching and the growing experience. You're going to have to learn to pick up new skills. You're going to have to learn how to be able to do something that you haven't done before. But it's all good experience because it really helps you grow in your software development journey. And I think the main two ideas I'm getting at here is the first one, of course, is every job has its own challenges. There's no job where like you're never going to have any challenges. It's going to always going to be perfect and dream world and cloud nine. It's not like that. Every job has its own challenges. That's the first one. And then the second one is that once you get the job, you're, there's going to be things that you're going to want more out of the job. For example, maybe you're going to want more pay or maybe you're going to want more flexibility in your job or maybe you want that promotion. And so it's this idea of the, the heart is always wanting something and you're even though you got what you wanted, your heart will naturally start to look to something else to fill that void again. 
So once you land that dream job, there's going to be a part where your heart will be discontent and you're going to be looking for something else. And I think that's, I want, I want you to really think about this because maybe you're in another career and you're thinking to switch into software development. Maybe it's because you're kind of like in that place already where you're at that job and then you feel like there's nothing fulfilling at that job. And so I want to challenge you a little bit before you start to go into software development. Maybe it's not the job that's the problem. Maybe it's something wrong with your heart. Maybe there's something there that uh, maybe you're just not really looking at the job in the right view, like your current job. Maybe you're not looking at it in the right view. And so maybe this is why you're thinking about like switching careers and going into software development. So I hope that you can actually start thinking about that first before you start jumping ship. Because if you don't address that in your heart now and you you, you leave your current career, you go into switch into software development, then you're going to run into the same problem and you're going to feel that same discontentment again. All right, so the last thing I'll say about this idea that your life will be complete once you land this dream job is that life is more than your career. It's about your friends, your family, about relationships. And as a Christian, it's about knowing God in a personal way. And I think it's when you know God personally that that emptiness goes away, that dissatisfaction in your heart, where your heart is always longing for something better and better and better. As a Christian, I would say it's only when you know God personally that your heart will be satisfied. So in summary, I just want you to be careful that you don't over glamorize the software job. Of course, having a software job would be great. It provides a lot of benefits, but it's not everything. All right, so those are the three misconceptions. The first one is that you can learn everything there is to know about coding in four months. That's the first one. The second one is that coding jobs have awesome work-life balance. And then the last one is that your life will be complete once you land the dream software job. And I'm saying I want to just want to bring these up, these misconceptions, because I think it'll give you a more understanding of what you're getting into. If you're just learning how to code, you're in the beginning of your coding journey. Just want to break some of these misconceptions so you really know what's really entailed, what, what you really need to do in order to get that software job and what a software job is really like. And so I'm hoping this will give you proper perspective so that when you're learning how to code, you're doing it in a way that is healthy and productive. And so what about you? I'd love to hear from you. Wh which of these misconceptions related to you the most? What are some things that you didn't realize about coding that you now realize from this video? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any other ideas about coding jobs and you would like more perspective on that, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I can just give you a comment and give you hopefully I can give you some more perspective and clarity on your question there right, like I mentioned earlier if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start you can download my 30-day beginner coding challenge and it's a 30-day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects it's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it cleared some misconceptions and gave you a more fuller understanding of what you're getting into if you're just learning how to code. And if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.